We're live. We're live? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> We're uh, getting Milo situated so that hopefully he's out of the way and quiet as he can be. So welcome. Hi, Kirsten. It's nice to see you. Hi. And I called Kirsten before we started and she explained to me that she was she's on her way to Elkton this afternoon. <laughs> So she could have been live, live, but we're, we're using technology. And um, so I'm really excited. Um, Kirsten's project sort of spurred me into a bit of um, humpback whale research. And I've been deep diving and doing, I even did some felting. And so we're going to talk about the project and pull supplies and talk about techniques. Um, Kirsten, you wanted to needle felt, correct? Yeah. Okay. But you were kind of open to the idea of wet felting. Yeah. My idea was that my first one I'll needle felt, but I also want to try it wet felted eventually. Yes. Yes. I love making two of something. So whenever I make an armature, I go ahead and make another one. And um, I love I love that idea. And I actually did some wet felting. So as we discuss the project, I'm going to talk about both things and talk about which fibers I think would work for both things. And have you made an armature or anything yet? Or are you not even starting? No, I haven't made the armature yet. Okay. Well, I, um, we can talk about that. My, my gut sort of instinct was a 12 gauge and 14 gauge, um, because you wanted your project to be about 18 inches. Yep. So let's go and take a look at the wires. Let me, I'm gonna throw my um, stuff into my cart. Your dress totally flows with her background. Oh, we're color <laughs> I love that. So without the whale needing to hold itself up, <laughs> we can, the armature's purpose, if you want to have it to be able to be in different positions, is basically to be able to like move it, you know, like, like a whale moves. So for that reason, I would have some strong wire in there because it's going to be a lot of wrapping and you want to be able to sort of override all of that wool with the wire. So I would definitely get some 12 gauge and have some 14 gauge on hand and um, cover those. Like I said in my last shop hop, I've been covering my wire more with the cloth covered wire than with chenille stems, but either one works great. You the armature is pretty simple. Whales are pretty fascinating because they are this huge jaw, like huge skull, and then very simple. They have no, their fins look like they are vestiges of like our hands, our arms. And you can see that when you look at the bones, but their pelvis and sort of any kind legs do not exist. I don't know where they went. <laughs> But have you looked at the um, skeleton armatures yet? Like at the whale skeletons yet, Kirsten? Yeah, I've looked at them a little. Yeah, yeah are they crazy? Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's pretty simple. One thing I wondered was if you would make a rib cage because you can sort of just stuff the rib cage with wool and then not have that super stiff, you know, chunk of wool that represents the rib cage. Um, so that was one idea and you could do that just by circling, um, you know, circling your armature wire to create that barrel that's there, especially if you wet felt a skin, you can lay that right over it. That's, that's kind of how I build bigger things like the giraffe. Um, it's more of like a skeletal structure with skin laid over it than tons of built up um, wool material. So have some uh, either cloth covered um, wire or chenille stems on hand to cover your armature. 
and I'm a little bit torn between looking at you on Kyla's <laughs> computer, and looking into the into the camera. Any thoughts on an articulated mouth and fins? Yes, if you if you build your armature basically using two long U's, you know, like pull wires that are they're going to end up being about fifty inches in length because you're going to twist them together and then fold them in half at the center. And each set, if you do that twice, is going to build a bottom jaw, basically. So if you create your armature in that way and wrap it in that way and keep these things separate, it should be able to pretty simply open its mouth. Cool. Um, and the fins just, they're going to come off of the armature, just like people or animal arms do. So they'll be, you'll be able to move those as well. I would make sure to get a second wire, probably either maybe across, um, across the fins, something just to help support them. Cause if you have one wire coming off the armature and do a lot of bending it's it's always at the risk of wire fatigue so um any other questions about um, armature how large will it be you said about 18 inches yeah is that right yeah okay yeah about 18 inches and so all right i'm going to get into fiber uh, i'm going to talk a little bit about process too if you have, or anyone watching wants to pull up a um, back whale reference image, that's what we're working on. And it might be helpful to see what I'm referring to. Um, I should have, I could like in the future print out something to kind of carry around, but they are basically black. I think we see a lot of the photographs are in water. So we're seeing their color diluted by the, you know, the cloudiness of the water that we're seeing them through and they end up looking a little bit lighter. So it's up to you if you want to go that true deep dark, it's either black or very dark gray, or if you want to interpret it, you know, a little bit lighter as if it's in an element with, um, and then they have a white belly and they have a huge variation in where those two meet on the sides. Some of them are more white up around their sides. Some of them are um, are dark and have, you know, just a tiny bit of white on their stomach. Um, so how you interpret it kind of leans your core wool one direction or another, I'd say, because you really could go either way. You could go dark, you could go with off-white chunky core, or you could split the difference and go with a gray. So um, I do have right behind me the um, the Payne's gray, which would be a great um, a great middle value. I do not know the total weight <laughs> of this project. I'd say it's going to end up being about six six to eight ounces. So I would get, I would get six ounces of core wool, whatever you decide to do. I'm going to add Payne's gray to the cart. And when we go to the other side, I'll also add off white chunky core to the cart. If you're needle felting, it's not too complex. There aren't a ton of face shapes or body shapes. So it's going to be a lot of wrapping. Um, and then a lot of stabbing of, of these color changes. They have sort of interesting, um, random sort of erratic markings going on. Plus we talked about the barnacle. So when I looked at images, I saw all kinds of cool things happening. I think one of your references images, Kirsten had actual like kelp. I think it was like a close up of the, um, fluke. Does that yeah. sound Yeah. So I will, when we get sort of out into the other space, I worked on some wet felting that I'll show you. And I experimented with different things in the wet felting to represent that. One of the things I like about the idea of wet felting, 
a skin or a pelt versus needle felting is that so much magic can happen in wet felting. Whereas needle felting, it's stab by stab decisions that tend to get more controlled um, and labored kind of, but can be super detailed. So it just kind of depends on how you like to achieve detail. Um, I tend to go with the sort of easy, no, I'm going to call it easier, <laughs> less work route. So for needle felting, what I'm getting at is needles. And, you know, we already picked out your armature wire, not a ton of tools that you'll need for wet felting. You would need a wet felting um, starter kit. So I'll show, I'll show that. Um, and I did not, I, I don't see any reason for um, swax or tacky wrap. I could see using some cold wax medium, but that's another benefit to wet felting is with added silk and the process, you get a lot of shine into the skin. Um, if to cold wax medium, the whole, then it's sort of like you're committed to doing the whole thing, which I'm not sure is a great idea. Um, this is the water sprinkler for sprinkling your wet felting. And we really like to, uh, the lavender soap that we carry, which I think I've passed already, but that's okay. So I'm going to come around to the other side where the core wool is and show you guys the pelts, the skins that I made. You can come over this way. Do you have any questions so far? No, not okay. right now. <laughs> okay. Any questions online? Not, not specifically. Okay. So the, the, the ne whether you're needle felting or wet felting, the fiber is actually quite similar for wet felting. I made, I referred to the mermaid that I made. So if you haven't seen that, um, it was, a um, felt along and we, made we wet felted mermaid fins basically so i went back to that to understand how i would wrap the fluke and i made this and i used um a lot of the dark merinos and basically blended what is raven so whether you were planning to needle felt or wet felt i would pick up raven and I threw nefs in there. I threw yarn in there. I threw some locks in there and I was, um, it has silk. It has silk hankies. <laughs> I just, I just went, I just went crazy with it. Um, and I felted basically the whole length of your piece of bubble wrap. I went that long and with the, um, with the added, dark on the fins I went that wide and this is going to be about 20 inches so it's a little bigger than than you need and this weighs three ounces just to give you an idea of how much fiber you need for that and then I wet felted a belly and I concentrated they have a lot of bumps up this would be underneath this would be as lower like this so um, I put neps, I cut up bits of silk, um, I put tiny little locks, and then I went ahead and put some dark lines in, but whether you wet felt or needle felt, you could use the natural pre-felt. Um, I used a natural pre-felt under here, and I used natural merino. I'll pull those in a second and go over it again. But when you felt it on, you can kind of make um, those bumps that they have, those ridges down the belly. Can you see that, Kirsten? Yeah, that looks neat. Yeah. Okay, so let's pull these merinos. I'm 
somebody thinks we need a whale tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> we knew that. Oh, I think it was Blackberry that I used, Talbot. So I'm pulling these individually, but the overlap would be to buy the Raven Pelt. It just depends which way you want to go. And you can do any combo of darks. I like to balance out, um, if I do a teal or a green, I like to balance it out with purple and brown. And then, of course, I want dark, dark, dark. It's alphabetical. It still takes me. It still takes me a little while. And then, so I have, um, I have dark. I have teal. Although you could do um, fur or wood. I also have fur, and I have blackberry, and they're all upside down. And coffee. So for those of you watching and for Kirsten, I'm putting everything in the cart. And then what I do is I send Kirsten a list and she can pick off of the list what she needs and what she would like to use and um, add it to her cart if she decides to do that. I also want to get some natural uh, for the belly. And I think we are close to Serafina White. Do you mind passing me one, Kyla? Um, Natural, I would use for wet felting. Serafina white, I would use for needle felting. This is just going to needle felt more easily. Okay. And then we're going to get the natural pre-felt. Even if you decide to needle felt, I think this would make your job a lot easier. Because, especially for the belly, if you want to get those ripples in there in their belly. Mm -hmm. um, so you could either direct felt onto your wrapped armature or even use a needle felting. You could kind of make a skin ahead of time. So you could use roll and storm is what I used up to you. Like, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. So even with needle felting, you could lay this out and just have a lot of fun stabbing away on it and then lift it and then apply it to your sculpture. Or you can take the fibers and just felt, but I think using a pre-felt help you get that really smooth, you know, even look. I'm going to pick up a couple of silks. Um, I used, honey tussa in the belly but i used oh gosh you could go with anything um this is ireland mulberry silk if you if you do wet felt if you needle felt i'm going to show you a different direction and then i like the honey tussa in the belly but there's also white there's also dune um, well, Dune's probably a little bit dark. What's it, Kyla right behind Talbot mm -hmm. is a mulberry silk. I think it might be sand. Yep. Would you use, um, something like cobalt, like turquoise to get someone's asking kind of the color? I think the lightest. The water. Oh yeah. I think teal, teal. and then you could. If you want to lighten it overall, you could use, is it Storm or Wolf, the dark gray merino? Mm. <laughs> Storm, I think. Storm is dark gray. Yeah. And so if you were hand carding or carding, um, you could get a dark gray in there if you wanted to go for something lighter than the, the practically black, which is, which is what I made. Okay, let me think. It's like a little overwhelming because I see it as kind of an opportunity for anything. So I'm like looking at fog and I'm looking at salt fruit and I'm, my brain just like, you could put that in there. Um, so we're going to circle around and go to the house carded. And that's where some of the colors that I think will work really well that are already blended because what I picked out it would require a lot of 
a lot of blending and not everybody wants to do that. I was also thinking, Kirsten, for the um, bark bowls, if you weren't wet felting and going for kind of an interpretive thing, your natural pre-felt in little kind of clusters with a dark center. Can you picture what I mean? Yeah, I think so. Like if you if you cut little natural pre-felt circles and then tack them in at the center, and I'm saying dark, but don't go too dark, just relative to white. Um, they have kind of these like rust sort of brownie colored centers. And then tack the rest of your circle around to make that little cup. Oh, that if, could be a neat idea. Yeah, so if you were going to try to create them individually, <laughs> that was sort of one idea I had um, for that. So for a dark, um, for the dark top, I would use Raven. And like I said, I ended up with about two ounces. And this is basically the color that I made by putting those merinos together. The other option would be, um, oh, I also thought that the horse coats would work really well because they are very smooth and they have some silk in them. So Blue Roan would get um, kind of this silvery color that I got on the belly. And this is silver, which is not quite white. So that's kind of a fun, um, fun tone that would work really well. All right, let me, let me look at my piece of paper and see, I'm doing all of this off the top of my head. So let me see what I missed here. Do, do, do. Okay. I'll show uh, the nefs and the silk hankies. I did put some silk hankies in there. If you decide to wet felt, um, top coat colors, raven or wood, dark coffee, um, current. I did use some panther. That's a fur, but not necessary. I just had it. So I, I put some in there. I like the way fur wet felts. If you blend it in with wool, it behaves like silk and it adds a lot of um, shine and little, little crinkles kind of. Um, core wool. Oh yeah. I was going to pick up some off-white chunky core. We have the Payne's gray. You could use carob. It They had really interesting markings where barnacles fell off, I think. Because they have like these little circles of dark on the white. So that's one reason to maybe go for a darker core wool. Because you could reverse needle some of that random stuff back out. Even if whether you needle felt or wet felt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to grab the off-white chunky core. I think four ounces would be enough. And, oh, one more reason to consider wet felting is that if you wanted the fluke and the fins to have be dark on top and white on the bottom, it's a lot easier to do that when you're not having stab through. Mm. So um, because the fins are so thin, if you're trying to needle felt dark on one side and light on the other it can get tricky because <laughs> you keep stabbing, you know, the two, the two colors through. So just another thought that I had, um, as I'm thinking through things. Are there any questions, Kyla? From well, somebody anyone? did ask about the power wax, mm -hmm. um, because you mentioned it. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know Okay, if you just wanted so to. So I've been using this, um, it's all wrapped up, but Where's its label? Oh, here it is. Um, this is a, it's called cold wax medium. It's made by the same company that makes the power text. And 
it's water-based. It's very easy to use. You take it right out of the container. I just use my fingers even, and you can press it in on little bird beaks, bird toes. We did it on the bat wings. I think something like a whale or a shark or any smooth skinned, shiny animal, I would rather achieve that through wet felting than trying to smear the whole thing with power text. But it's, um, if you check out the bats or the mushroom tutorial, we used it on the mushroom caps. And I love that effect, but that's a small area. I'm, I would be hesitant to like, <laughs> I mean, you can maybe shine up a fin or something, but then you have a, a you know, a difference between the body and the fin. Mm -hmm. So, so I like, you know, with wet felting, we can get a little bit of the look of shine and smoothness with the silk. Um, that's the way, that's the way that I would go. Um, Sabine saying you mentioned earlier compensation colors. Can you explain that more? I did. <laughs> did I use it appropriately right? maybe? Compensation colors. Like, were we talking about wet felting versus needle felting? or the two, the difference between the whale out of water or the whale in water. I don't remember what I was, what we'll I was We'll see if Sabine <laughs> elaborates on that. At yeah. All. Give me, a, give me a little more direction and I'm happy to uh, try to explain. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an exciting project because I just feel like there's so much, so many different ways to interpret this beautiful animal and all that's happening when I look at different reference pictures. Like I woke up thinking about how, how would I merge these two sides in a natural way? Um, and I was thinking like, okay, I could like crinkle this up, you know, like this and then cut it and then brush it out. And that would give me a super random edge. Or is this randomness enough? I don't know. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm excited to see it come to be, and I also am inspired to try my own. <laughs> so. Sabine said it was adding other colors to a base color to compensate. <laughs> compensate for what? You can look it up and post a question on fanfare, is what she said. <laughs> I don't know if it was adding, like with the merinos, adding, so not just using dark, but adding storm or a color to, to make it lighter. I'm not sure. Are you inspired, Kirsten? Are you excited? Yeah, I'm actually kind of getting a little more excited to try the wet felting one. <laughs> okay, good. I was hoping that would happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do both, you know. I will. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I love, I was saying to Kyla and Talbot this morning, like, all the, all of the interaction between the whale and the barnacles and whatever else happens under the sea, it is random and miraculous. And so... I do feel like wet felting is our way in art of mimicking that, you know, needle yeah. felting to is just takes a little bit of that out of it. Um, but that's how, like I said, that's how I approach things. So, um, uh, yeah, I'll have to do what works best for us. It's, um, it's also fun because of the color possibilities. So we're like, okay, they're black and white, you know, they're, dark and light or however, but in that there's so many directions to go. Like you could tone this blue and then tone this tan, you know, like it's, there's a lot of subtle directions. Like I'm looking at Ash Reno. Um, I don't have my glasses on, but I still can see it. <laughs> um, or, um, 
you know, like have fun with it. I, I, if I were to do it again, I might actually do that just to make it like a slightly off, like get some, get something like ash in here and something like, um, teal or, um, Toreg in, in here. And that would be, will you grab teal and Toreg for me? And that would be a really fun little play on complementary colors. Um, I think that's what Sabine was asking. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. You were gonna uh, look at Neps. Neps. Oh, Neps, thank you. You got a little Milo in the way. I'm missing the Oliver. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Um, I used white and I used um, storm and pumpkin or brown or bark. They're just called bark. And I had some fur. You don't have, you can either, if you wet felt, you can either lay silk in or you could use a hanky and, um, fur is a really pretty dark that looks good blended in to the colors that we picked out. Um, I had, these are actually floor locks <laughs> that were on the, that were in our, um, locks room. This is a piece of yarn. I was trying to, oh, look, I did put some, I put some onion in there too. So I'll just put these in here and you can pick which ones you like if you want them. Um, I was trying to create the, that one picture that I saw that had uh, what looked like kelp or something like, and barnacles. So I was super, uh, I just, I didn't think too much. I just pulled things and put them on there. Um, if you wet felt, I liked this, they have this little fin, <laughs> um, and all I did was when it was, when it was still wet, I just pushed on that and shaped it. Um, I pushed on it really hard from the inside and went, so when it's still wet, you can sort of ply, ply it a little bit. And then, um, like I said, I made this shape with the idea that it would get cut and these come around. I don't remember. I have to watch the mermaid. Somehow these come around and make the, um, make the fluke, but I haven't, I haven't totally figured that out. Question about, um, Tammy's wondering if rubbing a hundred percent lanolin in something would make it look shiny without being like too much mm. because it's wool, mm -hmm. natural property of wool. Mm -hmm. um, lanolin is super sticky. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I've never done that. I feel like it would vote. It would, it might pull fibers as you're trying to rub mm -hmm. it in because it's so sticky and also might attract dust. dust more or make it harder to get rid of dust. But I couldn't say for sure. I've never, we use lanolin in some of our products, but I've never worked with it, you know, on, on a sculpture, but yeah, these kinds of ideas and questions are how we generate, you know, new techniques is just exploring. And anytime we get a lot of questions about tacky wraps, wax, cold wax, um, power techs, anytime you're making something, you know, you can make yourself a smaller sample of that shape or that wrapped wire and try, you know, experiment. And then you can keep those samples, you know, in your workspace so that you can see, Oh, I did this. Sabine's really good at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, be a little scientist and explorer in your art and you just gain, you know, you'll figure new things out and figure out what you like. People are asking if we can include a supply list. So I'm thinking in the video description, like that's what, a great idea. What you had sent even what to I Debbie send, for the yeah, centaur. Yeah. Um, so I let's can go through it. Video description. Let's go through it from the inside out. 
because I, I do realize I'm a little bit, um, so we're going to lay it out on the table. Sure. I'm a little bit scatterbrained today <laughs> and being a little bit, uh, spastic. Okay. Let me organize here and then I'll, okay. So for tools, wet felting kit, obviously needles and felting surface. We don't, don't have those out. I did pull power wax because there were some questions about it. But like I said, not a lot of complex shapes on this project. Then we're going to build our armature. And we have 12 and 14 gauge wire. I recommended the strength of 12 gauge because if you want the whale to have a little bit of posability, that's a word, you need a strong wire to override this, you know, big, if it's 18 inches long, it's going to be, you know, about this big around. So having some strong wire in there is going to help you be able to pose it. I have cloth covered 22 gauge wire with which to cover your aluminum wire. Um, on the armature, I recommended to Kirsten that she do two U shapes and those wires are going to be between 50 and 60 inches long to give you the 18 inch whale. Then we're going to wrap the armature with core wool and Payne's gray is a nice middle tone between their dark back and their light belly. So it kind of works both ways. And on the light belly, a little bit of reverse needling could make some of the random marks that they have, um, including the, the sort of ridge lines that go down their belly. But um, off-white chunky core also is an option. The whale, I imagine, is going to be between six and eight ounces. So I have six ounces of Payne's Gray here. Then we're looking at whether you felt or wet felt using pre felt to create a skin. So I have Storm and Natural for the belly. And those will make your base for your skins. And then if you want to custom card your colors, we picked out a base of dark merino and then you can tint it with other darks like fur. I don't think I use teal, but I did use fur. I used um, blackberry and I used coffee. But teal could be in there as well. And then we have, oh, we also have Toreg. We talked about that. I did not use that. And we have um, Ireland mulberry silk for shine. And then on the belly, if you're needle felting, I recommended uh, Serafina White. If you're wet felting, I recommend Natural Merino. And you could mix in either uh, Tussa, White Tussa, Sand Mulberry Silk, or Honey Tussa to get some shine on the belly. So that's a choice between, you don't need all of these. That's a choice between these. And then also whether needle felting or wet. Um, the silver horse coat and the blue roan horse coat could be really cool additions on, on your belly. I think for mine, I used um, storm and I used wolf merino. I did not pull that out. Okay. And then for the top, 
um, a replacement for all of this would be Raven. And the top was two, was um, four ounces. So wait, did I say it was four ounces? Hold on, I've got it. Oh, I've got it written down one second. Okay, the top piece that I wet felted was three ounces and the bottom piece was two ounces. So with the pre-felt, two of these would be, two of these would be plenty. And then little additions and extras, you know, uh, different colors in your merino. And we have um, neps and hankies. And of course, if you wanted, you could get locks. Um, you could get locks to throw in. It's just such a minimal component. I didn't, I didn't pick it out. Anything else come up? There's no, no other questions. Okay. Do you have any questions, Kirsten? I have one question about the silk hankies. When you put them mm -hmm. on, did you just do like your base layer on top of the pre-felt and then put the hankies and put a little bit of wool on top or did you just leave the hanky right on the top? I put the base pre-felt and then I put my, my bat, which would be the Raven. I put a thin layer of that. Then I took a silk hanky and you peel it to get a really thin one. <laughs> um, have you worked with these before? Only a little bit in the flower tutorial, but that was it. Okay. Yes, good. So they come, they're squares and you gotta, you've gotta flake off one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you gotta pull it apart like that. And then I just stretched it out over this um, fluke area and then put a tiny bit of wool on top. Okay. Just enough wool to secure it. You don't want to, you don't want to hide it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And Scott said she wants more views of the shelves to drool more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I can't wait to see what you make. And I, I'm, I'm excited to see what I make. So I'll share it. Um, I do, I was inspired and um, hope to finish it. So people hope for a whale tutorial. Yes. So <laughs> I guess I have a question is how would you display it? Yeah. Maybe just on a piece of driftwood. Piece of driftwood. I could see going a little bit folk arty with like a like a dark stained dowel, just supporting mm -hmm. it on a cool rock or piece of driftwood. Or you could hang it. What were what were you thinking, Kirsten? Oh, I hadn't even thought about that. I like the dowel idea though. Yeah, yeah. I've seen whale sculptures like that, you know. Um, oh my gosh. I mean, you could, you could make a whole thing for the bottom. Like you could do when we did the wave, uh, felt along, we did a lot of, uh, coral reef look and kind of combining that with the forest floor idea, mm -hmm. you could make, um, something cool textured that it was sort of like floating over, but I like the, the kind of driftwood or stone minimal idea too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, it's going to be impressive, you know, at, at at 18 inches, and they're just impressive animals. So I think it's it's going to be really cool. I've seen a few people, um, our friend in Italy, Andy did one that was mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah. And uh, I was looking into other whales because as I was researching the humpback whale, I'm like, well, what's the difference, you know? And huge variation like in their the way they're shaped and their mouths and their size um so the humpback whale is just kind of one way to go but i guess the blue whales are the biggest i think so anything else you need no this was great yeah it was really fun for me like i sat down a whole, <laughs> whole you know a whole nother path um which is what is so great about this concept of the shop hop and um, just to let 
anyone who's watching know, we have a few more on the calendar and they're going to be special because we're going to use the shop hops to celebrate our 10th anniversary summer. <laughs> 10 years ago, Kyla and I started working together and uh, Jennifer joined in. And so um, we wanted to acknowledge that and celebrate that. So we're going to be having some special shop hops that include a discount on that day. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to share some armatures. So um, I hope you guys can tune in or, you know, watch them at a later time and look forward to those. So we will be sending a newsletter with that, mm -hmm. with that information so that you have, um, can mark your calendar, but yeah. And we'll, yeah. I'll put the list on the centaur. I'll put the shopping list and then on this yeah. one, I'll put yeah, the that's a great in the, idea in the video description yeah. for people who want to. That'd be awesome. It's yeah. great. It's like, we're creating a little log of, of project supplies and ideas mm -hmm. and information. So, um, yeah. Thanks for, thanks for participating and sharing your project. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like I'm still surprised it's all working out so well <laughs> <laughs> and everything. So cool. and any other questions? We're good. I think we're good. Okay. Thanks everybody. See you next time. Figure out how to go not live. <laughs> Do we think it's that? Sure. Sure. We'll exit out. What does that say? Your stream will stop. And, and.